In Jujutsu Kaisen episode 42, we see Yuji sluggishly wandering the ruins of Shibuya after Sukuna's bloodthirsty rampage. And as a result of Sukuna's actions, Yuji blames himself. But as Yuji ponders over this catastrophe, he begins to reminisce on his experiences that led to this point. Some of Yuji's memories include Sukuna's taunts, his senses' doubts on his conviction, and recollections from Megumi and Nobora empowering him. But surprisingly, one voice that Yuji recalls is the voice of Junpei Yoshino, who says, And that could only mean that people cursed me and my mom with those hearts. Now this memory of Yuji's is of Junpei right before his untimely death. And the reason as to why this memory is so important is because it was Yuji's first failure and also the first time his ethos was challenged. This is because before Yuji adhered to his grandfather's dying wish to save as many people as possible. But when Yuji recalls Junpei's voice, he is reminded of his failure in protecting his dear friend. And as Yuji traverses across the destroyed Shibuya, he is painfully reminded that even after Junpei's death, he is still inadequate in upholding his grandfather's aspiration. But hearing Junpei's voice again made me realize his importance to the series emotionally and narratively. And even though his demise happened so long ago, the array of emotions I felt from watching his death resurfaced just by hearing his voice. But why is Junpei still so impactful? And why, after all these years, does Yuji recall the words of his fallen friend? Well, those are the questions I aim to answer in this video. If I had a button I could push that would make everyone I hate die, I probably wouldn't push it. But if there was a button that would make everyone who hated me die, I'd push it without hesitation. Now, Junpei's story is one of great tragedy. And the reason as to why I describe it so harshly is because he's a harmless individual who is constantly targeted by awful and outright disgusting individuals. For instance, when we first see Junpei, he's being brutally beaten by bullies who outnumber him and are bigger than him. Hence, this instance shows the unfair power dynamics between Junpei and his abusers, as the bullies use their strength in numbers and physicality to mistreat Junpei. And given Junpei's meek stature, he doesn't have the means to fight back. But what's even worse is the bully's reasoning for their abuse is built on a lie told by the girl of the group who accused Junpei of staring at her breasts. Therefore, because of her sadism, she manipulated the bullies to harm the innocent Junpei for fruitless validation. And the boys obliged to her commands in hopes to sleep with her. Following, Junpei is gathered with his friends at their movie club. And in this instance, we see Junpei genuinely have a good time. We see him smiling, lecturing his peers about his passion, and overall being in an environment that brings him joy. However, this joy is interrupted as another one of Junpei's bullies, Shota, appears with his crew demanding Junpei and his friends to leave. But Junpei refuses to leave without taking the DVD underneath Shota's foot. And unfortunately, Shota disapproves of Junpei's defiance and viciously kicks Junpei on his head. And if that wasn't enough, Shota's subordinates close the room's door to continue exerting their wrath. So. What these two instances showcase is the cruelty and injustices humans are capable of because of their power. And in Junpei's case, because he is a harmless, meek, and timid individual, he is often taken advantage of. And unfortunately, when Junpei stands up for himself, he is brutally punished for it, therefore making Junpei feel utterly powerless. But what can Junpei do? He tried being innocuous, but that resulted in him being targeted. And he tried standing up for himself, but that only worsened his abuse. If only Junpei was given the proper means to dish out what his bullies had been serving him. Later on, Junpei goes to the movies only to have his experience soured as his bullies are there causing a disruption. But Junpei is not the only one annoyed by these pests. Mahito is displeased by them as well 
and as a result, he mercilessly transfigures the bullies into monstrous corpses. Now, once Junpei sees the horrifying corpses of his former nemeses, he is not frightened or appalled. Instead, he rushes out of the theater to find Mehito to ask him about his methods. And after Mehito accepts Junpei's request, he leads him down his cryptic lair where he shows Junpei his gruesome experiments and teaches him about cursed energy. And although these experiments consist of countless human casualties, Junpei is shockingly unfazed. But Junpei explains that his lax attitude towards these eerie experiments is due to the fact that he is already well aware of the repugnance of humans. Subsequently, Mahito tells Junpei that he needs no explanation for his feelings or lack thereof, as he believes that human life has no value. And because of this belief, Mahito sanctions Junpei to do whatever his heart desires, even if those desires involve killing those who abused him. But lastly, Mahito asks Junpei how he would react if his mother was experimented on, to his Junpei replies that he would lose control. And this is when I truly feel sorry for Junpei. This is because this instance exposes how blinded Junpei is by his hatred, as he doesn't realize he is being manipulated by Mehito. Even after Mehito shows his experiments, says that human lives are meaningless, and suggests experimenting on Junpei's own mother, Junpei still erroneously believes that Mehito is his friend and a good person. But although his actions are very foolish, his misfortune is not his fault. This is because deep down, under all that hate, Junpei is a kind and compassionate individual. But unfortunately, because of his experiences of abuse from horrendous and despicable human beings, his heart became dark. And this darkening of Junpei's heart made him the perfect victim for Mehito to manipulate. And sadly, Junpei is so consumed in his own hatred that he doesn't realize he is participating in his own demise. Therefore, with no one to save Junpei, he would become strengthened by Mehito's doctrine and begin to view human lives as deplorable. Luckily, there is one person that looks out for Junpei, and that person is Yuji Itadori. Now, as Junpei is walking home, he encounters his teacher, and through this encounter, Junpei realizes that his teacher's negligence led to his continued torture. And although the teacher had the power and authority to intervene, he did nothing. So infuriated by his teacher's incompetence, Junpei prepares to attack him, but is stopped by Yuji. What the hell is that? Whoa, this guy can see the curse. Now Yuji pulls down the teacher's pants and runs away with them as a plot to get rid of him. And when Junpei asks Yuji why he did that, Yuji replies that he did so because he knew that the teacher was upsetting Junpei. Hence, this act of Yuji shows how he's willing to go above and beyond to help someone in need. Later on, Yuji interrogates Junpei to see if he noticed anything suspicious during the incident at the movie theater, to which Junpei denies seeing anything protecting Mehito. However, despite this lie, Yuji takes Junpei's words as a truth. Following, the two begin talking about horror movies and are getting along quite well. Then Junpei's mother appears and asks Junpei who he's with. Junpei then responds and says that they just met, but Yuji retorts and says that although they just met, he can see them potentially becoming very good friends. Elated by Yuji's enthusiasm and Junpei's newfound friendship, Junpei's mother invites Yuji to dinner. Now in the following scene, we see the three eat, laugh, and overall have a great time together. But what's most important in this scene is how once again, we see how pure-hearted Junpei can be and how thoughtful he can be to others, such as his mother. And because of Yuji's vibrant, erratic, and friendly personality, we can see how the best parts of Junpei can come out when he's surrounded by the right people. But after Junpei's mother falls asleep, Junpei asks Yuji if he's ever killed anyone since he's a Jujutsu sorcerer. Yuji replies that he hasn't and wants to avoid killing anyone no matter the circumstance. Junpei then rebuttals and asks Yuji if his conviction will still stand if he encounters a bad sorcerer. 
Yuji then answers again and says that he still would avoid killing because if he did kill, then the option of killing would become a part of his moral standard. And this change would then make the value of life ambiguous to him. Thus, if the value of life became ambiguous, Yuji wouldn't know his purpose for protecting his friends. And the thought of that scares him. Now this dialogue between Junpei and Yuji is important because it would influence Junpei to second guess his prior discourse with Mahito. And this new skepticism of Mahito's evil doctrine of devaluing life would inspire Junpei to open his heart to Yuji's words. This in turn made Junpei think of his mother who is the source of much of his happiness because of her kindness, understanding, and compassion towards him. And this motherly affection given to Junpei brings him comfort, peace of mind, and most importantly, the feeling of being loved. Therefore, Junpei would be ungrateful to believe Mahito's doctrine that humans have no value, as his mother provides him with so much. And after Junpei's encounter with Yuji, Yuji inspired hope within Junpei that although humans are capable of immense cruelty, they are also capable of immense kindness. Thus, Junpei rejects Mahito's doctrine and gives up on his quest for revenge. But unfortunately, Junpei realizes this lesson too late as Mahito places one of Sukuna's fingers on Junpei's dining room table. And as Junpei's mother wakes up from her nap, a curse appears that tragically kills her. Understandably so, Junpei is completely distressed by his mother's tragedy. But unfortunately, in his distress, Mahito misdirects Junpei to believe that the culprit of his mother's death was his bully, Shota. So, completely misguided, Junpei makes his way to his school to reap his revenge and with his mother gone, Junpei is completely unhinged with no moral anchor to bring him back to his senses. In the following scene, Junpei enters his school's gymnasium and begins to punish Shota by covering his body with poison. And as Junpei is about to kill his abuser, Yuji stops him, begging him not to go through with it. Jujutsu Sorcerer, back off. Now this is where we see the ideals of Yuji go against the ideals of Junpei in a meaningful way. In this case, Junpei claims that Yuji's desire to save people indiscriminately and moral code to not kill is delusional. This is because Junpei believes that humans are cruel and if he wants to enact revenge on those who impose their cruelty towards him, then his revenge is justifiable. But Yuji calls BS and claims that Junpei is using his anger as an excuse to justify his wrongdoing. Yuji then further states that killing can never be justified because it comes with the cost of tainting the human soul. And once tainted, there is no going back. Yuji then emphasizes to Junpei that his actions are unlike him and asks Junpei if his mother would approve of his actions now. Then Junpei begins to cry and says that humans have no hearts because if humans had hearts, why would someone curse his mother with those hearts? He then further states that it's not right for someone as innocent as his mother to be cursed by someone. And the fact that someone did so is unjust and wicked. And because of this injustice, Junpei says that his morality is in flux. And this statement of Junpei's leaves Yuji speechless. This is because Yuji was speaking to Junpei from a place of judgment and moral authority, instead of trying to understand why Junpei fell into madness. Yuji then apologizes to Junpei and listens to his grievances. And once Junpei explains himself to Yuji, Yuji understands his pain. But before Yuji can do anything to fix this problem, Mahito appears. Alarmed, Yuji warns Junpei to escape, but Junpei tells Yuji not to worry as he assures Mahito to be good. 
However, once Junpei catches his words, he realizes that this whole time he's been duped by Mahito. But this realization of Junpei's is too late, as Mahito transfigures him into a monstrosity, and tragically, Junpei is put to death. Junpei Yoshino's story is one of tragedy. By being a victim of countless abuses, his tormentors laid their wrath upon him mercilessly, as he did not have the power to fight back. But once he caught a glimpse of the power he desired, his heart became corrupted due to Mehito's destructive doctrine. And unfortunately, Junpei was oblivious to Mehito's manipulation, which led to his lamentable fatality. And this really sucks. I say this because Junpei is genuinely a good kid. He takes care of his friends, is caring about his mother, and overall, a good friend to have. But because of his misfortune, his soul was tainted, which made it easier for Mahito to toy with him and dispose of him in the end. And the worst thing about this whole situation is that I genuinely believe that if Yuji or any other positive influence was in Junpei's life earlier, then his demise would have been avoided. But unfortunately, Mahito's claws were entrenched too deep into Junpei's psyche, preventing any other influence to make a substantial difference. Therefore, Yuji's encounter with Junpei was important because it was the first time that Yuji was unable to prevent someone's tragic death after he vowed to never let that happen. So not only did Yuji lose a close friend, his motive for existing and being a Jujutsu sorcerer was devalued. So it makes sense as to why after time has passed, Yuji still thinks back to Junpei after Sukuna's massacre. This is because these instances cast doubt on Yuji's objective to save people and make him seem like a delusional optimist. But what Yuji later realizes is that instead of lamenting on his friends' tragedies, he must honor their memories to become more committed to his virtuous ideology. And this is what happens to Junpei's teacher, Shotomura and Shota. After Junpei's tragedy, Shotomura rightfully blames himself for what happened and states that for the rest of his life, he will dedicate himself to do as much good as possible in order to pay for his sins. And similarly, this notion falls on Yuji as well, because he was unable to save his dear friend Junpei. So in his honor, Yuji must continue fighting the good fight, because if he doesn't, then that would be disrespectful to his memories with Junpei. And that's why, years later, Junpei still leaves an impact on Yuji. This is because Yuji must continue on his mission to save as many people as possible to honor his fallen friend.